Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a tutorial on human skin, which sounds really weird, but very important to make your characters look alive. In the previous tutorials, we have modeled Cora, UV mapped her, texture and substance to paint her, and now we're gonna be focusing specifically on her skin to make her look more like Cora. If you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so much more. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out that creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in texturing Cora's skin. All right, so here we are. And as you can see, she's got regular skin. And when we take a look at the shader, it is a smart material called skin. So if you miss that part of the tutorial, you just go into Substance Painter, go to your smart materials and type in skin. And you're gonna see that we have a couple of types. One of them is just skin face, which is the one I've used. Another one is skin feverish. So if I wanna make her look like she's being, you know, has some sort of zombie effect, then there you go. And then finally we have just regular skin, which is just, really simple. So the nice thing about this skin is that it does make her little ears red and it makes her nose slightly red and things like that. But let's talk about the theory of skin and then let's implement it in Substance Painter. The big thing about skin is that we actually have these color zones. The top of our foreheads is usually yellow white. Our cheeks and noses are red and then our chin is a gray blue greenish colored. Part of it is because of the blood vessels in our forehead. There isn't that many blood vessels, so therefore we see the skull a little bit more and the fats and everything, so that's why it's a little bit more yellow. Over here we have a lot of muscles and all sorts of stuff, so we get a lot of blood here, and therefore it turns red. And then the chin is pale because of the shadows, the beards, therefore we have significantly less blood flow here and there's a lot less sun here and therefore we get that effect. You can see that it was used in traditional paintings. So when you guys are looking at traditional paintings and even regular tr uh, current paintings right now, you'll notice that their foreheads have a tendency to be a little bit more yellow, the cheeks and nose are a little bit more red and the chin has a little bit more bluish gray. This happens to even women. So make sure that when you are trying to implement both men and women, you need to put that color zones in there. Otherwise, they're not gonna look alive. Now, if you don't wanna use that grayish color, like the five o'clock shadow that guys get after shaving so many times, uh, you can put a little bit of green, which is a nice complement to the red. So it helps their lips pop up a little more. more. Now, skin zones are like this. However, in reality, they're a little bit more breaking down. So I'm going to be using this as a reference to color my character. And then I also need to make sure that she gets some melanin because she is actually of darker descent. And finally, don't forget veins. So you do have a lot of veins. Take a look at your mirror and you will see that we have a bunch of big veins going through our heads and we need to add those to make it more realistic. And finally, floss. We want to make sure that we add floss so that Cora looks like she is a human being and that that includes moles, freckles, pores, so on and so forth. Now, lucky for me, this already has pores, so I'm good to go. But let's go ahead and get started on doing the color zones. All right, the first thing we're going to do is create a layer. And I'm gonna remove all of these options because I don't need them. I only need is a yellow color. So again, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty yellow. So maybe a little paler yellow, but I'm also going to reduce the opacity. But first let's add a black mask. Next, I'm gonna grab a brush. And for me, I just need a nice rough brush. So there's a variety of uh, rough brushes that we can use, including dirt, which I'm gonna make smaller by hitting my left bracket and then I can start going in. Now, as you can see, it's affecting the hair and that's because it's all in the UVs. So let me pop up the UVs. Let me go over here and go to 3D, 2D mode. So my focus is just the forehead. Now it is gonna affect the hair because, you know, I'm painting, but I just need it to be nice and chunky. And I'm looking at my reference and we do have a little bit of yellow around here. And I like the fact that it's splotchy because it makes it look more realistic. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow around her mouth, like around here. Maybe it's a little too big. Let me undo that. I'm going to use a smaller brush and just kind of get those tones. Yep, yeah. something like that. I know it looks it looks like fun. Go ahead and reduce the opacity. We are going to reduce the opacity pretty significantly. And let's remove all the other stuff. So going into the Polygon Fill Tool, I wanna to grab the shells and then I'm going to remove it. But make sure this isn't black and just go through and remove everything. Doesn't look like a big impact, but it really does make a difference when it comes to the color. 
Let me increase my percentage just a little bit more. There you go. Next is going to be red. So I'm going to double click this and call this yellow. I'm going to duplicate this so you can do control D. I'm going to clear my black mask, right click, clear mask, and I'm going to change my color to red, make it a nice looking red. And in this case, again, grab that brush, make sure you are on the mask. And in this one, we're actually going to be doing her nose. Oh, and you might as well make it 100% so we can actually see it. So I'm definitely going to cover her nose. Definitely going to be covering her cheeks. And all along here. Again, I want it to be splotchy. And you can also turn on symmetry, but to make it look a little bit more alive, I'm going to go ahead and just paint it myself. So I'm just going to go through and paint her uh, a little bit of her eyes over here. I might as well add a little bit in her ears as well. Again, it looks a little bizarre, but that's okay. And I might as well make this a little smaller and just give it a little color here. Her lips. Again, all the splotchiness is on purpose because we want to make sure that it looks kind of like veins. All right, she looks like she's been uh, <laughs> through some sort of paint. Let's go ahead and grab our polygon fill and remove the areas that we don't want. So her eyebrows, things like that. So I do want to keep her ears, go back to the paintbrush, and then I might as well duplicate this layer before I move forward. Duplicate layer, let me hide it. Go to the red layer and reduce the opacity. There we go. So I'm going to call this red. And then finally, we're going to use the blue. So I'm going to right click, clear the mask, change the color to a blue. You guys can go as blue as you like. Or if you want to go a little bit more green, you also can. So kind of like a bluish green if you want. I'm going to go for a little more blue. And then same story, we're going to grab our mask. And for this one, I'm going to paint a little bit under her eyes. Just like in the reference picture. And I'm also going to go ahead and color around her chin area. Like so. I am going to make this a little bit more in the teal area. So just a little bit more in the green. And just like before, we're going to reduce the opacity. Okay, so this is the blue, right? So let's compare what it was before. So let me go into 3D mode so we can look a little closer. So this is what she looked like before. And now this is, let me bring the red a little bit more because I feel like that's the most important. There we go. And I am going to reduce my blue a little bit more because I do just want it to be a little bit more subtle and then bring out the yellow a little bit more. Something like that. Let's bring the blue back. Doesn't take much. Right? So this is what it was before. She looked very like unalive, even though it was a cool looking texture. But with this, it makes her look even more alive. Red might be a little strong. Let me reduce the red a little bit more. Next comes the veins. Right? So I'm going to duplicate the blue one because I'm going to use a similar color. So you, again, you can right click on it and choose duplicate layer or do a control D. And these are going to be my veins. Now, again, I'm using a tablet. Again, I'm going to recommend that you buy a tablet because it's super helpful and it's basically replaced my mouse. You can buy a little one or you can buy a larger one if you like. I just use a baby, a little one. I'll share an affiliated link below on the ones that I like to use. One that I use as antique at work and then I use my little tablet at home. It will help you because it's pressure sensitive and you'll be able to draw all sorts of details really quickly. So let me clear this, clear my mask, and I am going to grab a hard brush because I'm going to, you know, draw on it and I also need this to be a little bit stronger and I'm going to change this to a deeper blue here we go beautiful <laughs> let me clear this uh let's see pink clear mask all right so again I'm, I'm looking at a reference so I'm looking at this one I'm going to turn on symmetry because I'm not interested in doing the same thing on the other side totally up to you if you want to do a symmetry or not and again I'm just kind of going through just following the reference and just going like this up and over. And then I am going, the other one actually goes behind the ear. You don't really see it, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw the same one. All right. And it looks like this one, the ear's off to the side. Press X if you feel like you messed up, which I kind of did. So I'm going to be very gentle as I kind of go in and draw the rest of the veins.
So again, I'm just looking at my reference and just kind of following what it does. And this is going to help make my character look alive. If you need to fade it off, just hit X and then you can kind of remove some of it. So you can kind of fade away, make it a little smaller. Just kind of fade it away. All right, something like that. You can add more and then I'm going to re do, reduce it significantly. All right. So you can see that really quickly I can get a nice looking, let me turn this off, uh, veins. And again, it's very subtle, but it makes her look more real. And that's really important when we're developing our character. Now, as we talked about before, she actually is significantly darker. I like to add what's called the melanin layer. So I'm going to add it. And this one is just for color. And it's going to seem really simple, but basically the idea is that I'm just going to go in and darken the layer. So you want to pick the color that you want, and then you can try multiply and then reduce the opacity. Right, so the idea is that she is going to look darker. You can also try other ones such as, uh, let's see, overlay. Oh, that looks too red. Uh, Devot. Okay, some of these are not working. <laughs> but uh, that's that one's kind of fun. But the point is, is like with multiply and other ones, you can kind of reduce or increase the melanin. And then that way you can darken and brighten her as much as you like. Here she is. Let me just get pick her color. So I'm going to grab this. Oh. I need to move the image to the side and I'm going to click here and just kind of pick that color. This would multiply, but this would be like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> well, according to the reference image, that is her color, which is interesting. So let me try multiplying it and then I am going to reduce that. Or I can keep it at normal and then just reduce the color as well. Right? But the point is, is that you can still see the textures and everything else, and it still brings out the blotchiness. So again, it's up to you. I personally like Multiply more, and then I can make her a little bit darker this way. Let me try other ones such as Overlay, uh, Soft Light. There you go. She looks like a zombie there. Uh, I personally like Multiply. I feel like that's a nice color. And then just kind of reduce it. Now, the trick is, is that you will need to do this for the other skin so that she matches on melanin. I am going to copy this, control C and go to the body and do the, here's the skin. I'm going to open it up and basically paste control B. There we go. So now our whole body fits that color. So you can go back to the head and then you can increase the intensity if you feel like you've lost the detailing. So if you want to bring the blue out a little bit more, you can. You can bring out the red a little bit more if you want to. You can bring out the blue a little bit more if you choose to, so on and so forth. So all of this are supposed to be the under layers of the skin, the fats, the tissues, all that stuff. And then of course the melanin is on top of that. Let's go for freckles. So we're back here. I'm gonna add a new fill layer. Once again, I'm gonna remove everything. So remove the height, metal, all that jazz. And then I am gonna choose a dark color because this is going to be her freckles and a black mask. I might even go darker still. And it's up to you which way you guys want to do this. People like to try to paint it in. So we have a dots and you can kind of make them small and just kind of add a couple of freckles here and there. So that's kind of like a nice way of adding a little bit of information to the character. Don't forget to do some smaller ones. Right again, the tablet's super helpful can add a couple and you can cluster them. That's always really nice. You can kind of add a few more. So that kind of gives her those, those nice little freckles. You can make them a little bit, just, you know, little different sizes and things like that. You can always flip the color and help remove some of those back. And then of course you can always paint them away too. All right, so that's kind of giving her a little bit of a freckled look. Uh, you can reduce the intensity if you feel like they're too strong. Let me go ahead and call this freckles. Let me copy this and bring it into the body. I'm adding it to the skin face layer because it's already masked. So I'm going to go in here and just going to add a couple of freckles. Let me make it a little darker and then just add a few freckles here.
If you want to add a mole or something like that, you can also. You can just use the brushes, whatever you like. But I'm just going to go ahead and just add a little bit of texture um, to make it feel like she's, well, from like the Mediterranean. Or I know she's from the north, but uh, that kind of gives her a little bit more information. And don't forget to add a couple here and there on the neck. Because they're everywhere. How do I know? Because I have freckles and they're everywhere. So let's add a, maybe a couple in the ear. Pink. And pink. All right. So now we have some skin. And of course, to make her feel like she's got eyelashes, I would like to create some actually in 3D. But I do want, still want to have that eyeliner. So let's create a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and create a black mask. Again, I'm going to remove all of these things. Though I might keep roughness just in case. And I'm going to be looking at her reference image because there's a, she does have, I know it's eyelashes, it's anime eyes, but I'm going to try to mimic something similar to her. So I'm going to go back into my brushes, remove this little X, grab the brush, and I'm going to choose a hard brush. And this color she probably is going to be in a darker, kind of dark gray. I wouldn't go all the way black, but I'm definitely going to go the dark. To do with her eye makeup, make sure you turn on symmetry. And I'm just going to kind of draw kind of like what she has. It's kind of more arcs like this. And then color it in. Even guys have some sort of eyelash. Now, you probably don't have this makeup section here that I'm drawing, but they definitely have some sort of eyeliner. And that eyeliner is just supposed to represent eyelashes because it's, it's one of the highest contrast areas in our faces is the eye, our eyelashes, and our eyes. So you want to make sure that you have that. Even if it's a male character, just make sure that you add that in there. So you don't have to do anything extensive and it doesn't have to be very dark, but uh, it'd be a good idea to add that in there to make them look more alive. And I'm gonna take a look at her UVs. I'm gonna grab this tool, make sure that's selected and then make sure that these are selected as well. So that's dark because we wanna make sure that if the eyes move, you're gonna see that on the other side. For any accidental painting, such as over here, I would probably paint them out. Hopefully that's all there is. I don't see anything else. So there we go. So that's going to be her eyeliner. And don't forget the lips. Let's add another new layer. This is going to be her lips. Again, we don't need any... Uh, well, I'm going to keep the roughness. And um, I might keep them height just because I might need to make some streaks. Let's go ahead and figure out a color. Now, Cora in the reference doesn't really have much of a color difference, but we all do. So let's go ahead and make a selection for her skin color. Oop, wrong one. And then I'm going to go for a little bit more in the redder section. So I might bring it in just a little bit of a change. We'll see if that's a good fit. Let's add a black mask. I'm going to grab the polygon fill and actually grab not shells, but faces. And that is way too pale. So I'm definitely going to change it. But right now, let me just grab this as well. So let's grab the faces. Let me change the color because <laughs> that doesn't look uh, great. And just going to make it a little bit more. Maybe that's a little too pink. Whoop. Let me go for a little bit more skin, something like that. Is that too? There you go, lipstick. <laughs> That's the fun thing about this. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. Maybe, like, it's a little too much. I think that's okay for now. And then go back to this the black mask. I'm going to paint because I need to remove some and add some. Sometimes it's just faster to paint it. How does that look? That actually looks pretty good. Okay, for the color, for the roughness, I am going to probably reduce the roughness a little bit so it's a little shinier. But she does need some lines. I'm going to increase the height map just a little bit. And then 
There is an anastropy that I can use. I do want to increase the tiling. <laughs> That's what I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I am going to significantly rotate, <laughs> reduce it. Let's go to the height. And we can try changing these things to like multiply. And then you can see that I now have, uh, I can keep the gloss, I can keep, but I can also keep the lines. So that's a, that's a great way of controlling it. You can actually go to the particular area and I can reduce just the height if I needed to. Right. So there you go. All right. Why don't we take a look at what she looked like before and what she looked like after. So let me make some room here. So this is what she started off. She started off uh, looking pretty pale in comparison. It actually looked okay, but then once you start adding all the color zones, the veins, the melanin, the freckles, the eyeliner, and then the lips, you can see how much more alive she actually looks like. So again, before, after. Definitely looks like she is, well, like a real person. Can't wait to export her. And then her eyes are going to be a big deal too. Um, in the next video tutorial, we are going to cover how to do geometry hair. So I'm going to show you guys how to texture hair in Substance Painter. But I'm also going to be showing you guys how to create X-Gen hair in Maya. So that one's going to be a lot of fun because we're going to use guides to create realistic hair so she can look cool. And of course, we're going to replace her eyes. Uh, but there you go. That's how you make uh, skin. I love doing skin it takes you know some time to get it all built up but once you have it it's actually really fun let me know what you think by leaving a comment below if you learned something or you think it's interesting and you want to see more please like and of course subscribe that is your message to me letting me know that you like this and that you want to see more uh don't forget to comment i read your comments i may not be able to respond to all of them but i do read them so please leave a comment i would love to hear what you think if you feel like my videos are helpful to another artist out there please share it would be wonderful if you could share my videos with other individuals other artists just like you take a look at academicphoenixplus.com there you can find free resources like 3d models ebooks resources, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. So again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and finish her up by texturing her hair.